yes, sir. We, love you. we have yes, been joined yes, yes, by Rashad Robinson from Color of Change and Alfonso David, who oversees the Global Black Economic Forum for Essence and is working on uh, quite the, the the venture to ensure that uh, black folks turn out to vote in November. So, Alfonso, right. we'll start with you um, and then come to you, Rashad. Talk to us about what you have going on. So, um, this, as everyone knows, is one of the most important elections of our lifetime. Yeah. I mean, I think we hear about this all the time every four years, but this is really an existential threat to our economic freedom, whether we can actually be free moving forward. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing at the Global Black Economic Forum, working along with Essence, is we launched an initiative called Paint the Poles Black. That's it. We want to make sure people understand that our rights are on the line. And so this is about voter education, voter registration, voter mobilization, and importantly, voter protection. Yes, yeah, right. Because if you show up to vote and they tell you that you need a third form of ID, or they tell you that the polling station is closed, mm -hmm. when in fact it's open for another two or three hours, that's voter suppression. That's right. And if you don't know what your rights are, you don't know who to call. So we entered into a partnership with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights to make sure that people have the information, right? We can't be in a position now where people are mobilized, they're registered to vote and they show up, but they can't vote. We see what's happening in Georgia. We see what's happening across the country. That's right. They just passed That's right. a piece of legislation where anyone can challenge. can challenge your ability to vote without any evidence. That's mm. right. So you may register to vote, show up to vote in a month from now, yep. two months from now, then they tell you you're no longer in the voting rolls, no one told you. That's right. What do you do? Yeah. Vigilante so, democracy. That's right. exactly. Exactly, exactly. We know they love to Authoritarianism. Right, yeah, exactly. But it's vigilante. Yeah. You're empowering these these uh, uh, carry, all he says, these people got carry laws, right? Yeah. Open carry laws. Yeah. yeah. And now right. I can come to you and check you on whether or not you can vote. Right. That's Until insane. a bunch of black folks start showing up with guns to check white people if, they got, if right. they got the right to vote, then you'll see those laws change. I want to bring in Rashad Robinson in the conversation, uh, yeah. who runs Color of Change. And I, you know, I think for a lot of us who have worked in this space, uh, covered politics for a long time, you guys are household names for us. We yeah. know your organizations and what you do, but for a lot of the people out there, they may not know what color of change is and the significance of your organization yes you are a civil rights organization the unique thing about your organization you'll correct me if i'm wrong you don't take corporate money correct so you uh <laughs> you do not you are not beholden to anyone's agenda so you can be truthful uh and and stay true to the uh, agenda and goals of the people talk a little bit about what color of change does and, and your role in that organization yeah so Color change is going to be 20 years old next year. Wow. So it's a next generation Unbelievable. racial justice organization. It's just, it's incredible. And we were actually founded in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. And that's important because it does speak to what you were just saying, Tiffany. Um, we were founded when black people were literally on their roofs begging for the government to do something and left to die. And mm. that moment that really illustrated a whole set of things that we already knew, right? Yeah. Geographic segregation, generational poverty, the impacts of what's been done to our planet and in so many other systems. But at the heart of it, no one was nervous about disappointing black people. Yeah. At all. And That's if right. folks are not nervous about disappointing your community, it doesn't matter what kind of research report you have that illustrates a bunch of facts and That's figures. True. It doesn't matter what kind of app you have. You can't code your way out of systemic oppression. Um, you can't nonprofit executive direct your way out of systemic oppression. And so what we do is we leverage people power and narrative change. We were founded with a single email to about a thousand people saying join a new movement. And since then we have grown to a movement of millions of folks, black people and allies of every race. And we run strategic campaigns. And so you're not going to see a campaign from Color of Change that says tell Mitch McConnell to stand up for affirmative action. Because who cares how many people sign that petition? Mitch McConnell's not going to stand up for That's affirmative right. action. But are, <laughs> That's but, real. Right? But it's a waste are, of time. But yeah. there are corporations that say buy our products or use our services. That's right. And we can't have them, you know, coming to us by day and then taking away our vote by night, taking How about away that? our freedom yeah. by night, taking away our ability to access education and employment opportunities. Yeah. And so the millions of members at Color of Change, we leverage them. 365 days a year. And so that's not just about coming out to vote. Yeah. And so one of the things that's been really exciting is the work we've been doing around prosecutor reform because so much of the criminal justice system, we get angry about what's happening. And so we've, over the last several years, we have 
both put prosecutors in office and we've taken some out. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we um, leverage our members to use technology and we build this back-end system that allows our members to reach out to irregular voters, voters who don't show up to every election. Oftentimes they don't care about what's happening at the top of the ticket. And we give them very real things to do, but we also let the prosecutors know that when we endorse them, we're going to put you in there, but we might take you out. Um, and over time, we're going to show up after the election for accountability. And so up and down the ballot, we try to do that. We've endorsed, obviously, Kamala Harris this election cycle. But we've also, over the years, pushed uh, Vice President or Senator Harris. But that is actually how democracy works. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And That's right. that is what we have to do. And, and so um, part of what does it mean to be not just present, not just visible, but powerful, is that our ability to constantly be in this in this space? We also you, you, um, endorse Andrew Gillum up here. Yeah, at, yes, I love that. And, 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 and that's my dear brother. And and we've worked with um, mm -hmm. all of you on this stage in different ways. You know, it's so interesting as we sit here. We've been talking about it every day. But as we as we're sitting here, you talked about holding folks accountable, including prosecutors that you would both support and not be afraid to take out. And as you said that, there were a couple of mayors that walked by. Um, Eric Adams, um, well, and he, you haven't seen him yet, but um, the mayor of Chicago is also walking Brandon by. Davis. Brandon. Thank you. I was uh, okay. I was I was definitely about to call him the mayor of Baltimore's name. Um, but I was thinking, Alfonso, if you could wait in here on the importance of not just engaging folks around the voting part of our civic responsibility and engagement, but also on the accountability part. We have a job to do just like they have a job to do for us. We pay them. Right. So what happens on the other side of the election? Look, I think as we talk about the importance of voting, if we don't hold our elected officials accountable, we devalue our vote. Yeah. Sure. Right. So if you show up to vote for an elected official and you cast your ballot, and then six months later or a year later, they fail to follow up on their promises, your vote is devalued, and you're telling them that your vote is devalued. So yeah. it's important that we hold them accountable, yeah. it's important that we follow up, and all of our organizations, the Color of Change, the Global Black Economic Forum, we're here to make sure that we hold these elected officials accountable. We can talk about the issues. We can talk about employment, housing, public accommodation, credit. In all of those categories, black people suffer significant disparities. Yeah. So if we're electing people to address those disparities, mm -hmm. we have to hold them accountable. Yeah. And if we don't, all they have to do is the following two or four years or six years, depending on where they are, They'll say what they say every election cycle. We vote for them every election cycle and nothing changes. So part of the apathy that I'm concerned about is people say, I vote every, every election cycle and nothing changes. Yeah. Well, nothing changes because we're not holding our elected officials accountable. I agree wholeheartedly. Well, can I get off of the other side of that, which is we're in Chicago. Kim Fox came in as a prosecutor and ushered in reforms across this community and now she has decided not to run for re-election yep. largely because the police union and all of the institutions that she upset with her reforms challenged her and said we will come after you we will take you down the same thing happened with Aramis Ayala we there yeah, are cases yep. that we can cite Florida. all over the country where we have gotten behind these yes. reform oriented prosecutors these reform oriented elected officials but nobody has been there to have their back yeah. to make sure that we got some protection for our folks and this may not be y'all's job that are no, sitting no, here no 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 no, 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 no. That is exactly what he said. That, is, that, is, that, he did that, is, that, is, that yeah. is our job. And, and Kim was the first prosecutor we elected. We actually then showed back up for her re-election. And I remember we had people at the doors knocking, our members at the doors knocking. Um, and this is just important for the community to right, yeah. understand. Yeah. We had people knocking before COVID hit and we had to like go everything digital. And folks were mad at her for prosecuting um, R. Kelly and yeah. mad that she didn't prosecute Jesse Smollett. And we had to spend a lot of time trying to help people make sense of all that and really talk big picture around all the things that she was no longer prosecuting. That's right. The people that had been released, the things she had done on drugs, the reduction in size of Cook County um, Jail, which is one of the That's largest right. jails um, in the country. This was very clear things. I just saw Kim uh, yesterday. And, um, and yes, the police union, we have a police union prosecutor kind of engagement program. Just recently, we've had victories um, at 
at the city council here in Chicago, where we've been reducing the power of the police unions. They were actually trying to bring um, um, the, the cases when, against police where they are being um, held accountable. They tried to make all those hearings private. And we won mm. at the city council recently, mobilized yeah. our members to hold them accountable. But we need more people. That's right. No yeah. single organization can do That's it alone. Right. And the right. attacks on Amara Sayala and Kim Fox are not just about attacks on prosecutors. I but think I, people yeah. have to understand the larger thing we're going to be facing this election cycle. They are not attacking Kim Fox the same way they are attacking Larry Krasner, right. um, the district right. attorney in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, who's doing the similar work. They are attacking them in very unique ways, going after them as black women, going yes. after their families, working to try to make them unsafe. And part of the work that has to be sort of recognized, the muscle we have to build in our community is understanding that we won't have good people to go in those positions. Yes. If we don't protect. sort of constantly build power to protect, recognize accountability and protection have to go hand in That's hand. Right. Yes. When someone does That's the right. things that we want them to do, we have to champion it, That's not right. just so that they see it, but others um, who might not yet be there see that there is hope on the side of freedom yes. there's hope on the side of doing the right thing Agreed. I, I, I know i know oh I just really quickly i just want to say i think um that's such important work was shot because republicans take a victory lap frequently on the first step acts that is at the federal level and they are eroding uh what that that, that did at the federal level at the local levels the first step act is called the first act first step act because there needs to be a second step third, and a third step fourth. and a fourth step all those federal policies only apply to federal police and not over local and, police. and over 80 80 to 85 percent of people are prosecuted and yeah. put behind bars at the local level. Right. 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 So, so but, yes, we can win a lot of things at the at the federal level, and we should. But so much of this happens at the local level. And parenthetically, yeah. just so that we keep some context of the national election, Donald Trump wants to give immunity to all law enforcement officers. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank so, you. so, so yeah. l let's be clear about the differences as well as this delves down. But a black uh, into man who want to know what the Biden uh, administration has done. Think about what it would mean for you to have a Donald Trump who wants to grant every law enforcement officer immunity for whatever immunity. they do. Immunity. And, yeah. and, and, they, and let's be clear. They are not prosecuting crimes on Wall Street and on Capitol Hill. We're mm -hmm. at the highest level. This is not about um, the kind of big systemic level crimes that they're putting people behind bars for that actually hurt people. They're attacking people for low level crimes, one-on-one um, -on -one crimes, but the sort of big high level sort of yeah. crimes that, that, that fleece and steal our communities, that put us in harm's way, that, 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 that steal people's paychecks, yeah. that yes. make people unsafe, that steal people's health. Those things are not being prosecuted at the right. high level. That's right. Lenar was going to weigh in. Yeah. Oh, no, I was, I was thinking about something else earlier. You know, Tiff, uh, Tiff referenced uh, a victory lap, and I thought that was such a good term because it feels like Democrats are already taking one. It feels like it's not enough energy going into energizing people to vote, registering people to vote. It feels like it's almost a coronation happening here, but the election is not a guarantee. So how do we make sure people are focused on actually voting over the next 80 days? I would say everyone, if you, if you didn't listen to Michelle Obama's Hello. speech last night, we should have it on repeat. Word. So good. We should have it on repeat. Yeah. It was one of the best, if not the best. Do you think it should have been last? We've been talking about she that. She should have been the closer. Y'all know that. Closer. Easily. The you audacity, the the audacity of President yes. Obama. Yes. 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 Well, I'll question. just say, I think it was the best national convention speech I've ever heard ever. in my life. So yeah. good. Yeah. Period. But what, it, what about Barack Obama in 2000? What was that, 2006? Four. Four. Oh, 2004. Four. You're right. Yeah, it's 2004. Nah, Michelle, nah, Michelle, nah, I Michelle had that opinion. one. She yeah, bodied I'm with you. It. I'm with she you. bodied it. I'm but, with you. But, you know, we have to understand that this is going to be a fight over the next few weeks, over yeah. the next few months. Yes. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. We are mobilizing here. Yeah. There are folks that are, that are coming with the same vision and the same perspective. But when we leave the stadium, there are a lot of people who disagree with what's happening here. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so we have to be mindful about the work that we need to do. Yeah. As she said, we have to make sure we're standing up, we're doing the work. And for those who think that we've won this election, you just have to talk to people in your own family. That's and right. That's it. So that's we right. appreciate y'all you know. yeah, yeah, so he, much. Well, he just said something that's yes. real. Though. An event like this energizes the opposition. 
watch it. Yeah, watch it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. We also shouldn't be afraid of our own shadows. That we sh we can stand in we can stand in excitement and victory and enjoy about our nominee. But what people don't get to see at their home screens is what these delegates are doing during the day. I've been a delegate several times. They are in workshops. That's right. They're learning trainings. They're doing door to door yeah. training mm -hmm. in the morning all the way up until they have to check in here in the afternoon. So I don't want folks to have the illusion that they are in any way drunk with joy <laughs> yeah. and not sobered by the work that lay ahead. Can I, can I, can I just yes, and point? we're going to close out with Rashad. Just speaking yeah. of the work, we all got to go do it. Rashad, we're going to close out with you. I just want folks to join us over the next 76 days in doing voter contact work. Yeah. We are in Michigan, we are in North Carolina, we are in Pennsylvania, we are in Wisconsin. And so people, we, we are having a conversation, we are doing analysis, and if people want to know how to take action, join us at the Color of Change Pack. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be doing, uh, volunteers will be reaching the voters who are not yet voted, not yet committed to vote, um, voters who may have skipped some elections, and we are going to be communicating, engaging, and so you can text the word commit to 55156, the word, the word commit to 55156. I'm just all about action in this moment. That's it. Because we are talking a lot about everything that we need to do, and so I want to just demystify it for everyone. There's a lot of places you can go, not just Color of Change Pack, but I want to invite you that we have a tested, true, data-driven program that's going to be reaching voters, and we've proven over the over the years that we um, are able to turn voters out that don't regularly vote in elections through the power of people like you who are listening, who do want to get involved and who want to volunteer. That. And Wonderful. that's a way to engage. Thank you so much, I, Rashad. And Alfonso, it. where can people find out more information about your initiative as well? I would say go to painttheposeblack.com, go to gbeth.com. As Rashad said, there are many of us doing this work. Yep. You can go to a variety of organizations. We're going to have events over the next few months for the first event we had more than 200,000 people participate. Wow. Wonderful. That's so, so cool. more work to come. You thank you all for having Keep us. Thank you so much.